All right. So welcome to the next lesson in Unit 3. Um, we're starting out with the do now question. So for first thing I'm going to ask you to do is to please copy this down, copy this formula down. So whenever you see something that says compounded, um, any way except for continuously, you're going to go ahead and use this function um, or this formula. So A is equal to P, which stands for the amount that we start with. Um, and then since it's always growing, so this compound interest, it's going to be 1 plus, never 1 minus with growth. Um, then the R is going to be our rate. N is going to be how many times it's compounded. And then the exponent is going to be N and then the variable T. Time is always going to be in years. So just a, a footnote real quick. So if it's compounded annually, please write this down. If it's compounded annually, your N is going to equal 1. If it's compounded by annually or semi-annually, they both mean the same thing. That means n is going to equal 2. If it's compounded quarterly, forgive my handwriting, my n is going to equal 4. There's four quarters and a dollar. If it's compounded uh, monthly, like in this question here, the n is going to equal 12 because that's 12 months in a year. And if it's compounded daily, right, our n is going to equal 365 because there's 365 days in a year. So here our n is equal to 12. Um, they tell us that our interest rate is 3.75%. So 3.75 divided by 100 is 0 0.0375. If you don't want to divide it by 100, you can move the decimal two places to the left. So that's 0 0.0375. So that's our rate. Um, $5,000 is our principal, um, and we want to know how long will this be after 13 years. So T is equal to 13. So all we're going to do is plug numbers in. So we have 5,000 is the start. 1 plus our R is 0 0.0375 divided by our N is 12 to the N, which is 12 times, right? I'm right here. So NT, so 13 years. And then you literally just take this, plug this into the calculator, which I did for us already, and we have 8,135. So our amount is going to be about $8,135, and it's asking us to round it to the nearest cent. So that's going to be 0 0.02, right? 0 0.02 cents. That's pretty good. For $5,000 in 13 years, it becomes $8,000. Okay. So now... I'm going to go over here just for the rest of this. Um, so we just did the first problem. So if you have something called like a continuous growth, right? So continuous growth, that's when we're going to have a different formula. We're going to have a formula that's A equals P E R T. So I call this A PERT. Um, and all that means is this is the amount that you're starting with. It's compounding continuously. That's another way of compounding it, which means that it's the compounding is happening all the time instead of just twice a year or four times a year on the problem above, just monthly. Um, and da, 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 yep, those are the, the basic things. So if you go back to this, um, what we want to do to convert, right? If they say, hey, it starts out um, as a regular function and we want to find out what the continuous growth function is going to be, all you do is take the number that's in the parentheses. In this case, it's 3. Um, and we're going to find the ln of that number. The starting amount is still going to be 5. But now, because it's going to be compounded continuously, we're going to use e. And then the number that we just found is going to be our k in this case. And then we're going to multiply that by t. If that got a little confusing. We're going to go ahead and do a problem here just to see. So the first thing we're going to do, our B is this number right here. So we're going to find the ln of 1.20. So to do that, I'll take my calculator. Above the on button is a store. Above the store is an ln. So I'm going to put 1.20. Right? Close that parentheses, hit enter, and I get 0 0.1823. 0 0.1823. So ln of 1.20 is 0.1. What was it 823? Okay, look at me using my brain and remembering. Okay, so now uh, I want to round this to 10,000, so tenths, hundreds, thousands, ten thousandths place. So I did my rounding correctly. Good. 
So now I'm going to write my new equation, right? So I have g of t, because they want us to write it with g of t. Then I'm going to put my original amount. So my original amount was 40. It's the number in front. So I'm going to put a 40. Um, and then I have, right? Then I'm putting an e next, because now it's going to get compounded continuously. And the number that I just found is 0.1832 and they want us to use the variable t because this is our variable here, okay? So this is our equation. Um, if we're going from the 40, right? One, if it's got gonna be compounded, uh, not annually, it's gonna be compounded continuously. This is how you would do that problem. All right, so now we're gonna do a half-life problem. So remember the formula, right? I actually wrote it again right here. So our A0 is the, uh, the start just going to write this down. So contains 64 grams is going to be my start here. And then it says if at times that's at t equals zero time, um, how much carbon 14 remains at time 17,190 years. So 17,190. Okay. And then our H is going to be, if I take a look, that's how um, the half, how often it halves, which is 5,730 years. So I'm just going to write that down. So all I did is I plugged it into my formula, right? So my A0, the start is 64, it's a half life. Um, and then the T, which is uh, the, right, it's telling us the T is 17,190. So now we're just going to take this and plug this into my calculator. So 64 parentheses, one half, right? Alpha y equals option number one, one half, right? Close parentheses, hit the exponent sign. And so now I'm doing, I should actually, right? While I'm here, do this as a fraction, option number one, right? And I have 17, 190. And then on the bottom, I have 57.30. Good. And then I have no unknown, so my answer is 8, right? So that means that there's going to be 8 grams um, at 17,190 years, okay? So I'm going to ask you to do this check for understanding. There is an increase, so we're going... <laughs> So we're doing continuous growth, which means we're going to use the E. Sorry about that. Clearly, I'm doing this video from home and not from school. Um, but we're going to use the E formula is going to be my hint. So go ahead and try that. Give that a shot and let me know. All right. Good job.